We talked Stanford a few weeks ago. We're welcoming all our new friends uh, to the ACC as we continue our 12 games in 12 weeks preview of the Orange football season. Right now we're looking ahead to November 16th out at Cal. And our next guest is Justin Allegri. He is the voice of the Cal Bears. Uh, Justin, another welcome to the ACC. What's this whole crazy process been like for you guys here for the last year or so? It, it, crazy is a good word for it. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, for, for me personally, uh, last year was my first year covering a, a Pac-12 school. So it was kind of like I needed to refresh myself a little bit of the history of the Pac-12. And then all of a sudden, uh, the night before my first game with the Golden Bears, we're in the ACC, so I've got to refresh myself again this year. It's um, it's it's hard to describe. I mean, we, we all kind of just follow the ride that is college athletics these days, and this is where we are right now. And we're facing the first year of uh, of a lot of quirky travel and and non regional matchups, uh, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, yeah, I think that's got to be the way. Uh, certainly, you guys in Stanford, we had your counterpart uh, Troy Clardy on a few weeks ago, and that was kind of his thoughts on it like what 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 is it like the planning the travel like how how is the the cal people i don't know have they tried to embrace it i'm sure this wasn't choice one here of how things played out over the last year no it wasn't and 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 it was harder too because last year for pac-12 football it was one of the best in maybe the last three decades you had nearly every team yeah. ranked at one point in time uh last season it was really really high quality football and and that was the final year so uh, a lot of fans were very upset with with how it was handled and and felt like there were a lot of different responsible parties that led to the uh, to the dissolve of the Pac-12. So, but at the end of the day, when you look at it and you saw all these schools jumping ship to the Big Ten to the Big Twelve, you, you didn't want to be left out. Um, and and obviously a couple were, but for Stanford and Cal, they felt like they had to find a home that would still allow them to compete at the highest level first and foremost. And I think they were vo- both very uh, also concerned about the academic side of it as well. And I think the ACC ultimately was the only choice. Um, and they were fortunate. I, I still feel like they're fortunate that they they got in there. Now, in terms of preparing for it, I, I think there were a lot of hurdles that were not necessarily overlooked, but really not necessarily thought of prior to the announcement, just because they had to make the announcement. So it's been a lot. There, there's a, there's a lot more money involved, obviously, in travel extra days of travel for a lot of different sports. What does that mean for academic advisors? They're traveling more. Um, it's all about the student athlete well-being now because they're going to be on a lot of planes and in a lot of hotel rooms. Um, and then the other side of it too, that I think not, not a lot of people are talking about are the demands from the ACC network for producing uh, games on campus, which the PAC 12 network didn't necessarily have that demand. Mm. So there's a lot of, a lot of different, um, ways to look at this before we can fully say all right now we're on board we're we're, we're in rhythm here there, there's there's still a long way to go okay yeah when i'm watching uh, like syracuse at cal women's basketball at 10 30 on a thursday night uh, we're gonna need a top shelf production on ACC network. <laughs> right so, uh yeah yeah because the pac-12 network like it, it in many ways was part of the downfall of the league it was innovative at the time and it went it went wrong right like it's one of those it, it caused an effect things going back a, a, a decade when you look at how, what larry scott did it's kind of weird how the fallout of that still plays out and like, oh, well, now you guys actually need this thing. So here's another thing on the list. <laughs> yeah, you know, if there was an evolution there, I, I think we would have been still in the Pac-12, right? I mean, if, if they were able yeah. to to morph that into kind of what the ACC has done and make it more of a revenue opportunity for each university, we may not be having this conversation. But uh, the reality is it wasn't. And uh, now we're in a spot where they need to try and generate those revenue opportunities. And you said, I mean, specifically for Cal and Stanford, save for the minor 3,000 miles between the schools, like when you look at like v. like, right, actually trying in the in, in the in the Olympic sports. I mean, Cal's had literal great success in the Olympics uh, so far in the last week. Like there's a lot to like, right, save for the major issue that the schools aren't anywhere near each other. <laughs> yeah, and, and I think a lot of people, the first reaction was, well, what are what are teams like softball and baseball going to do? That classic ACC yeah. matchup where Cal is going to Boston College for a three-game series in baseball. It's <laughs> like, you know, uh, how, how is that going to work? And 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 I think the answer to that is we still don't know. I, I think from a logistics standpoint, they're going to have to try and figure out what best works. 
for basketball and for football, it's probably not as taxing. Uh, football, you're just going to leave an extra day and you're going to travel out there on a charter. It's not going to really matter. Um, I think there are different options on the table for how both men's and women's basketball are going to travel and, and what that scheduling looks like. You know, are we going to have uh, multiple city road trips or are you going to have travel partners? It still is to be decided, but um, it, it's it's going to be certainly more taxing on some of the other sports that are, one, playing more games, uh, and, and two, um, having to travel more frequently. Yeah, and travel partners, heck, I mean, you, you guys know that well from the Pac-12. That was literally how the basketball schedule was. Men's basketball, it was Thursday, uh, Saturday. I know Syracuse in both men's and women's basketball this year uh, drew the West Coast uh, road trip. I don't know if you've heard anything. I'm just assuming that's one trip and you play both games, whether it be uh, back-to-back days or two and three days. Uh, have you heard anything on your end? Because no. we're all just kind of waiting for the ACC schedule to come out. In a yeah, month to get all a, we know, to get like everybody else, is. all we know are, are, are the matchups that we have. And and I mean, yep. it would make sense if Syracuse is going to come out, they're going to play us and Stanford. I mean, it's right across the bay. It's yep. it's pretty easy. And for a lot of the schools, those those travel partners, if you will, would would be relatively easily done. I know some of them are kind of outliers, but it might be the way to go. Um, but I <laughs> I haven't heard no. And and, and it's uh, I, I think still kind of. They're, they're, they're trying to figure out how are they going to do men and women for, for some schools yeah. to let them travel together? Or are there going to be flip-flops here and there? It's, it's, um, it's up in the air right now. I haven't heard. Yeah, I'd say for Syracuse anyway. I mean, their men and women are both playing those games. It, yeah. it would make sense to toss everybody on a plane and head out that way and uh, flip flop and do it in uh, one weekend. But to your original point, it also has to go on TV, and there's a, there's a lot of uh, way yeah. of things that have to fit in here. As we got Justin Allegri, the voice of the Cal Bears, we're continuing our 12 games in 12 weeks preview of Syracuse uh, football this year. We'll, we'll get to the football uh, here in a sec, Justin, but it, it is the Olympics going on, like. We, we talk Olympic sports. Like at Cal, that means something, right? There's a bunch of Olympians over there right now. Well, what is uh, campus like of people following this going on in Paris at this moment? This, this is always a fun time to be at the university. I mean, there's 59 different Bears that are over in Paris right wow. now. Two coaches and, and 57 athletes. So, And whether they be incoming athletes, uh, athletes that have already gone through or current athletes, they're, they're all over there uh, competing. Um, so it's been a lot of fun because every time you look, there's there's somewhere a, a Cal representative. It's It's been a lot of fun. But on campus, I mean, it, it's a buzz. And you know, normally this time of year, you're you're watching football practice. There's some there's some dial up with some different things. You know, Cal doesn't get going in terms of academically until the last week of August. So for more or less, it's, it's dead on campus. But right now, everybody's focused on the Olympics. And I know you were kind of joking before I came on, you know, it, I, I feel like we're all experts on, on different sports that we've never seen before. I was watching handball the other day. Oh, totally. Just, oh man, <laughs> I, let's diagnose that, right? No, it's, it's, uh, it's been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of fun. And, and Cal well represented in swimming, water polo, uh, the rowing team well represented as well. Uh, and then we'll see some track and field student athletes too. So it's been fun to watch. Yeah, I was locked in on the uh, the ten thousand meter race earlier with the, the, a Stanford alum and Grant Fisher coming up with the uh, the great medal earlier. Uh, let let people know this because n- now that you're in the ACC, you have an immediate ACC rivalry, which is still Stanford. Like, what? <laughs> how, how big is the competition with with the team that's uh, right across the bay from you and basically everything you guys do? I was I, I was aware of that rivalry, uh, obviously from my prior uh, job, but when I got on campus, it was very clear to me that Stanford and Cal was high level rivalry. I mean, th- those two teams hate each other. Those two fan bases, they're cordial, but they, they will talk a lot of trash. Um, so it was fun <laughs> going through my, my first year of the big game in Stanford. We, we beat them over there uh, and, and they, you, you get the ax, which is on this big plaque and there's a whole story to it going back several, several decades uh, going back uh, into the early 1900s with Cal student athletes uh, or, or students stealing it and Stanford trying to steal it back. And then finally it was gone. It was missing for a while. No one knew where it was. And when Cal has it, no one really officially knows where it is. It's kind of kept in hiding. Um, so th- there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of different things that go on. It's a lot of fun, but both schools, I think it, they embrace it. It's not, it's not hostile. It's just fun. Um, so looking forward to it. And I think that was one of the big big question marks you know if cal's leaving the pac 12 
what are their rivals going to do? Uh, and, and I think that was a big part of the reason that why both athletic directors at Cal and Stanford wanted to have mutual negotiations uh, to keep that regional opponent and to keep that rival and make sure that at least those two uh, would be playing one another again. Across the various sports, I mean, football obviously stands out, but like the other sports, have games with the other former Pac-12 teams been scheduled in other stuff? Obviously, I mean, Stanford's still in the conference. It's yeah. right there. The others are a bit of a, a trip. Like, is there former Pac-12 teams playing each other, or is that not so much a thing yet? A big part of it is that the, the, the non-conference schedules now, um, especially for things like men's basketball, women's basketball, yeah, it, baseball, softball, there's a lot of opportunity for West Coast teams. And if you're looking at a USC, do you want to travel to another part of the country in your non-conference? No, you're going to be doing that in, in Big Ten play. So I know for a fact that men's basketball will play USC this year. There's a contract in place that they'll have kind of a home at home thing. Uh, obviously, Oregon State's coming for football this year. Um, and there have been other discussions in other sports. It, to me, baseball is the easiest. Um, because you can go down and play a three-game series against UCLA and, and feel pretty good about, one, the level of opponent you're going to have, but two, you're, you're not going to break the bank going down there and you can bring them up just as easily. So it will be nice to have some of those West Coast games and former Pac-12 uh, matchups that you, you you know the teams, you know the organizations. Um, but in terms of contracts in place, I know just of a few. Okay, so that, that'll be interesting to watch as it plays out. Obviously, you know, this stuff all happens so fast and schedules yeah. well out into the future. We'll, we'll see how it all goes. We got Justin Allegri with us. Let's hit the actual football here uh, a little bit before we let you go, Justin. Uh, we got uh, another Justin, Justin Wilcox, is, is into his eighth year now as the Cal head coach. You know, it, he took over a program. It felt like in turmoil, right? He, he's been there for a, a while. Is a breakthrough moment coming? How, how do the Cal folks feel about Justin right now? I feel like with, with Coach Wilcox, there were a couple of years there where he was trying to just get some traction going. And in 2019, yeah. it felt like there was a real turn that was made. And then the COVID year happened and there was a real, real step back. And it wasn't necessarily the fault of the coaching staff. It was just the circumstances of what happened to the program. So they felt like they had to restart again, the recruiting and everything. Uh, and last year was a good step in the right direction with some young talent. Uh, as well as some returning uh, seniors uh, that, that got the job done. It, it, it is something for Coach Wilcox that he he wants to try and make sure that he's a guy that can sustain success. So it's a big year for him, and he knows it, that he wants to try and get back to a bowl game in back-to-back -back seasons. Uh, he's got some personnel returning that I think can help him do that for sure. But last year, the, the frustration from him, he, he's, he's such a defensive-minded head coach, and that was his background. And for the most part, you look at the, the recent history of the Cal Bears, it, it's been their defense that has led them to success. Well, last year, that wasn't the case. Uh, and you can, you can talk about some of the high-powered offense in the Pac-12 making that challenging. But uh, the primary, primary focus for him in the offseason was to ensure that the defense would return to some similarity that we saw from the years past. So that was the focus for him. And Hopefully he can do it. Um, there, there's a lot of new faces, like every college football roster, it feels like. But uh, we'll see mm -hmm. how it breaks out this fall camp. Yeah, that goes without saying. <laughs> In the day and <laughs> yeah. age of the transfer portal. All right. I feel like the next thing I usually ask here, Justin, is, all right, how's the quarterback? What's the quarterback situation? Uh, instead, uh, Jaden Knott's a pretty darn good running back. <laughs> What's it like to watch this guy play? I mean, he can go. I mean, have you played the video game yet? Because it's pretty similar to how he plays on the field. Uh, he is he is explosive. He's dynamic. Uh, he, he is... Uh, very, very fast. I mean, he'll split the safeties no problem if he gets out in the open. So his his best asset is his speed. Um, and, you know, he was a guy that last year he led the, the Pac-12 in rushing, but he missed time. I mean, I, I know the stats will say he played in 12 games, but there were a few games there where he missed a quarter here, a quarter there, two quarters here. Um, so really, those those stats accumulated over probably 10 games worth of actual playing time. So he was he was outstanding last year and then in the final couple games of the regular season coach Wilcox said well have you ever returned kicks and he said well no not not really since uh, freshman sophomore year of high school and he goes down to UCLA and he houses the first kickoff he's ever touched for 99 <laughs> yards so uh, th then you add that to it and now Cal's got this dynamic kick returner and and a top tier running back uh, and it really does lead for some problems. Now the the question it becomes who's gonna who's gonna back him up because 
I, I think over the course of his career, you, you don't see him and his body type as an every down type of back. So uh, how are they going to spell him when he needs to take a breather when he comes out of a game for a few snaps is the question in fall camp. But undoubtedly, when Jaden Nott is healthy, he is going to be one of the best in college football. All right, Justin, uh, thanks so much for hopping on today for part of our preview of the season. Uh, enjoy the rest of your summer as we're, we're getting into it now. And I'm, I'm sure we'll talk. It'll be three months from now, but we'll, I'm sure we'll talk when we get to, to Q setting out to Cal in November. But thanks so much. Looking forward to it. Thank you. There he is, Justin Allegri, the voice of the Cal Bears. Yeah, we're we're coast, bi-coastal now. We're going coast to coast with this ACC coverage. Our 10 game, 12 games. This was game 10 of our 12 games in 12 weeks preview of uh, Syracuse football. Two more to go, UConn and Miami. Miami's return to the Dome for the first time in more than 20 years. They've been in the same league for 12 years, and the ACC never sent Miami to the freaking Dome. Oh, those divisions were grease fire. All right, we'll take a break. We'll come back. A little 411. We'll do that here in the 315. That's next on Q Sports Talk and ESPN Radio.